Good afternoon, everybody. We greet you from the First Baptist Church of Washington Hills. For the Reverend Ronnie Bullard is the pastor, and I serve as associate pastor. My name is James A. Smith, and we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we come tonight for our Bible study. We're so glad to be here. We thank Pastor Bullard for the opportunity to teach tonight. And I looked and looked and I thought what I was going to teach you about and God laid this on my heart about more than conquerors. More than conquerors. Paul wrote, I'm taking this from Romans 8, 31 through 36. And I'd like to read uh, the scripture. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemned it? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen. Again, uh, who is he at the right hand of God, who also make an intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, nakedness, a peril, a sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. A more than conquerors. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Yes, yes. Thanking you, Father, for another day on this journey. And glad that you were with us today, Father. And we add, we love you, Father, because you loved us first. Yes. We didn't know nothing about love. The word said, while we were yet sinners, you sent Jesus to die for us. And yes, we, yes. we just appreciate it. We just so Thrilled about it, Lord, because you have done something for us that we couldn't do ourselves. That's right. Father, we thank you, thank you one more time, and we ask that your spirit step in and teach this lesson. Yes. We thank Pastor Bullard for this opportunity. Yes. We thank all of you are who are here in the building and those that are on the internet. Yes. Yes. internet. So, we pray for those that are sick and shut in. Yes. Some are in the hospital, some are in nursing homes. But we pray, Lord, that your will be done yes. on this day. Yes. And Father God, don't forget about us over here trying to serve you. Yes. Father, give us that a little more spirit. Give us a little more grace that we can hold up this bloodstained banner in yes. one of these days. When this body lay down, we can hear you say, well done, a good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Let us say amen. amen. More than conquerors. Paul here in this eighth chapter, I think the last time I preached, I preached the first part of this. Uh, but... I'm down at the bottom part of it now. And uh, in these verses that Paul is teaching to the Romans, he's writing to the Romans. 
And you know what? This Bible is something else. I know y'all already know that, but it's something else. It'll help us every day of our life. Paul says we are more than conquerors. That means we, the, we, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit, we can overcome this mess that we're in today. That's true. Amen? You know, some people look at what's going on in the world, and you ask them how they're doing, they say, oh, uh, I'm, I'm making it day by day. We're supposed to do better than that, according to Paul. Yes. We're supposed to overcome this world. That's the only way we're going to hear God say, well done, that we overcome all this mess. Yeah, it's shootings, it's killings, there's all kinds of stuff going on, robbing. Yeah. But you know what? As part of this fallen world. Yes. Amen? And so he says in these verses, I want to go down to uh, verse 837. He says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And Paul says, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, or whatsoever, these things present these, well, for, for these things present. I can't read my own writing. Put it up there, she. Okay, no things present, no things to come. We ain't got to worry about nothing. No height, no death, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. You know, you know which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And as we look at these verses, this is a lot of part of the story, but he's talking about things that we are involved in and we see every day. We see it on the news. We see it in our neighborhood. Yeah. None of these things going to stop God from loving us. That's right. Now, we might look at it and might not want to love God, but I'm going to tell you something. Love God all you can. Yeah. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and he will take care of you. Yes, he will. Amen? All right. So Paul says here in these verses, uh, we got a job to do. He said we are more than conquerors. And why is he saying that Paul knew what was going on? Right. And you know, Paul, the guy that was on the Damascus Road, fighting against Jesus, destroying all Christians. Matter of fact, when they when they stoned Stephen, he was there taking the coats up. And so he was agreeing with that, but one day, like some of us. Me and you, one day we met the Lord. Right. Uh, and things changed in our life. Paul met him over the master road, and every time he wrote something, he talked about how he met God. Mm -hmm. Had a blinded light, blinding him, a light that blinded him. All right. Amen? All right. But as we look at this, I want to get to this conqueror. All right. We are to conquer this world through Christ. It says, through him that loves us, we are more than conquerors. Well, what you going to conquer, brother preacher? Well, all this lying and cheating, all this robbing, killing, we supposed to conquer that through our love, through the love of Jesus Christ. How you going to conquer it? Well, they won't listen to me, y'all. You still got to do it. You still got to tell them. Hey Amen. We got crooks in the White House, uh, crooks in the Senate, crooks everywhere. Somebody said if you look in the dictionary for what a crook is, you'll see a politician in there. I don't know, but I noticed some crooks go go get voted in. They ain't got that much money, but when they get out, they rich. So something ain't right up there, and we know it's not right. But we 
have to overcome all of this stuff. Now I want to tell you about a word. This word conquerors. It's a word. Uh, Paul says more than conquerors. It's a word that's translated from one more than conquerors. Those three words right there. We are more than conquerors. Paul said the words were translated from a Greek word, from one word. That word was, I'm going to try to see it, hypernikomen. Hypernikomen. And so, that's close enough. And so, it's a Greek word, but that's what they translate in, in the, they translate that Greek word to more than conquerors. But that word means in the Greek, it's uh, the first part of it is hyper. You ever raise a two-year-old? How they are uh, hyper, out of control. Huh? And if you ever raise a two-year-old, you'll know how hyper they can be. And three, yeah, that's true. How hyper they can be. But that's what that first part of that word is, hyper. Then he got Nike in the middle of it. And that means uh, victory. So what Paul is saying, we are hyper victorious in uh, over all these things. What thing? The thing that he mentioned earlier. Over the things that he mentioned. The things that will separate us. Yeah, the same. Try to separate us. He said, look, he said, Neither death, mm -hmm. nor life, nor angels. He said angels, now he must be talking about them bad angels. Because most of the angels that we hear about is the angels that go, that God is over. They they check in to God, and they go and do what God tells them to do. So these have to be some of them bad angels, some of Satan. But, amen? That's right, the money. And so, he said, principalities, no powers, things present, or things to come. Well, this is not all about to bother us if we got the power of God working in us. That's what he's talking about, uh, conquer. We need to conquer all this stuff. Sometimes we have to conquer it in our life before we can conquer it anywhere else. You know, because, you know, I'll tell you what, they, I know y'all don't know about it. These people call me so much on the phone, won't ask to speak to nobody. They said, tell me who they are. I'm David. I called a text. I said, who you want to speak to? They said, I want to speak to you. I said, if you don't know my name, you don't want to speak to me. Click. <laughs> but I get phone calls all day long, fill up my answering machine. I said, Lord, don't let me start no bad talk, no bad words about these people. David, David was a veteran. Huh? David, when they call you, they say, David, he's a veteran. Yeah. Uh, this ain't no veteran. Mm -hmm. They want you to give some money. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Police call the other day, want some money. How do you know that he is? Huh? This could be anybody. Well, this guy called all the time telling me who he is. I said, who do you want to speak to? I don't speak to you. I said, no, you don't. <laughs> so when, when, when we deal with, with more than conquerors, I mean, that can, that can go a, a real broad way. You know, we can conquer our bad attitude. We can conquer drugs. Uh, I mean, just whatever, whatever thing that, well, you know, that's that, right. that bothers us, that hinders us in Christ Jesus, we ought to be able to overcome them things. And we have to start with ourselves first. Right. We have to conquer those things uh, in ourselves. Can't go out telling nobody how to uh, conquer nothing if you ain't conquered in yourself. Well, what we're dealing with is, is Jesus Christ, you know, and, and the Holy Spirit, you know, and we're dealing with God and the Holy Spirit. We, in Him, we can conquer them things. Because with self, you know, that old flesh is hard. But when you're in the Word and you get the Word and well, you're being fed, you can overcome the things if your faith is real and you're trying to be real to your faith. Well, you know, uh, we have to have the Holy Spirit leading us. But 
So see, that flesh ain't gonna act right. Like I was telling you about these guys calling me, I want to tell them something, but the Holy Spirit won't let me tell them. So I be nice to them, but I still hang up on them. You know, sometimes I don't even answer them. Uh, my answer machine used to ring about seven, eight times before they pick up, but something happened to them, they start picking up after three rings. So I just let them ring and let them pick it up. Cause I don't want to talk to them, cause I, I don't want to say that they are gonna mess up my, uh, you know, mess up my walk with God. But it, it's, it's mess up. It's, my question is, my my question because I always look at that, and, and since you brought it in to the lesson, Mike, those things mentioned there, he said, shall not be able. So their intentions are to try to separate us or try to separate us from the love of God. That's right. But That's just the mental way or somewhat think, have the attitude or to think that God doesn't love us. That's right. Yeah, that so, well, see, we got to know that when we were born, there was a war going on between God and Satan. It's still going on. And we done, when we accepted Christ, we got into that war. Amen? So we got to fight that war. You just can't sit on the sideline and think you ain't in it, but you're in it. And that means when you accepted Christ, Satan's going to be after you. That's what Paul was talking about all these things here. He wasn't talking about something that's going to come on in the future. He's talking about right now. What we fighting right now. Every day we fighting something. Sometimes I just go on by, just let it go, you know, because I don't, I don't want to get in no thing where going to, people will shoot you for no reason at all. If you say something to them, sometimes I don't even blow at people when they act crazy, because I know how they are, how they, some of them want to pull a gun out on you in a minute, but that ain't out of the way. But, you know, uh, the Bible tells us we wrestle or not against flesh and blood, but principalities. Right. And things, uh, the, the, the evil demons of this world is what we are fighting against. So prayer is how we work or, or, or fight against it. Okay. You can't go out there with no gun trying to fight no demon. Yeah. You pray to God, you know. Yeah. I say that, I like the last time I preach, I say that I pray in the morning. And I pray in the evening, but all in between, I'm praying because somebody done did something to me or did something they weren't supposed to do. But I'm praying not for them, but for me, that I don't act a fool. Amen. See? Amen. And so, Paul here says, we are more than conquerors. All right. And so, we know things going to happen. We're going to, these things that happen every day, that's what we have to conquer in ourselves, conquer. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul said, you know, I said something a while ago about people talking about they trying to make it and they doing right, but we supposed to be better than that. Mm -hmm. We are more than conquerors. We're yeah. going to conquer this thing yeah. if we let Jesus lead us. We let the Holy Spirit lead us and not jump in Somebody do me wrong, I'm gonna jump on them. No, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. People do me wrong all the time, but it's taken me a while. I ain't gonna say I just, I, I did that from the beginning, but it's taken me a while to get there. And I'm still getting there. I'm still trying to not do nobody wrong. I'm trying to, it's come down to loving everybody. You gotta love them. I mean, people park in front of my driveway. I say, I know they know they park in front of my driveway, but I don't say nothing. I just pray about it, you know. And thank God I ain't got to go nowhere. I ain't got to go no worse than that. Pastor, yes. have you ever felt, you, in, in your walk in this life, you ever felt not loved by God? No. I, you know, I've not. In a situation or circumstances that have, have ever arise. You talking about if you do something against God, uh, against God's work? I have these circumstances, situations that, that have confronted you and it made you feel as if God doesn't love you. I can't say I have, Brother Pastor. Now, I know I done did some things that I shouldn't have did, and God straightened me out. Yeah, yeah. That made me know that He loved me. Yeah. That's what I'm, I think 
that's what he's saying because there, those things come to oh. get you to feel yeah. and say, God, I don't love you. Well, yeah, that's that's what uh, that's Satan's job to do. That's what his job is. Uh, you know, and uh, that's what he said. He told uh, God that one day. Y'all remember when the sons of God are coming up to meet, meet him and here Satan and come with him? He said, Satan, what you doing? He said, I'm going to it for to see who I can be about. In other words, he want to mess us up. And if you don't have that prayer life, he will mess you up. I'm here to tell you, you keep praying no matter what. You know, relationship too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we, we as believers, we have to bear in mind that, you know, from the beginning of John 3, 16, that he gave us all the begotten Son. Yeah. Now, if he gave us all the begotten Son for our sake, it wasn't for the benefit of his sake, but for our sake. We are bought with a price. So therefore, we, we don't own this body. No. He owns us. That's right. You know, so therefore, you know, it's just like us individuals. We're not going to let somebody come in and destroy what's ours. That's right. And the same with the Father. If we just go to Him when we are faced with adversities and trials and tribulations, if we just go to Him, yeah. you know, like say, like a kid run behind. Mama or daddy and hold on to the dress tail. Yeah. You know, yeah. we can do the same thing in prayer, more or less. And, you know, he's going to take charge. Well, and the outcome may not be what we are expecting, because yeah. he's got a greater plan. That's right. We have to learn. But look at this 27, 37 verse again. He said, Yet in all things we are more than comfort through him who loved us. Mm -hmm. That's through Jesus Christ. How are we comforts through him? We are comforts through him because Jesus, when he, he uh, rose from the dead, he said he's given all power. He controls everything. Everything. Don't let get by Jesus. And he got a firm grip on us. You know? He got a firm grip on us to keep us every day. Because he know we're going to mess up. He know we're going to mess up, but thank be to God for, that we can go to him in prayer. You know, and some people think because they mess up that God don't love them no more. Yeah. But it's like God's family is a spiritual family, but it's like the earthly family. We got some kids in our family that are do mess up and do some of everything. Amen. But we don't throw them out the family just because they messed up. They still in the family, so we still in God's family. That's right. Sometimes he just has to chastise us, right. you know, and straighten us up. That's better than going to hell. I'm so glad he does that. Amen. 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 So we are conquerors through him that loved us. That's through Jesus. That's through God. They loved us. Like what Brother Donnie was saying. Well, what were you saying, Donnie? Say that again. <laughs> I don't forget. <laughs> well, like that, we bought with a price. That's right. Okay, that's what I want to say. We bought with a price. And how can Jesus came down and walked this earth, and He saw that we couldn't, we couldn't do it. We couldn't. What do you call it? Sometimes you can't take the mustard or something like that. They used to say you can't. You can't do it. We cannot do it without the Spirit. So what God do? He said, if you just believe in Jesus, you can have a heavenly home. Yeah. If you believe that Jesus did it, that he died and rose again, yeah. Yeah. that's all you got to do. Yeah. Jesus did the hard part. All we got to do is accept it. Yeah. You see, so we ought to know that we are conquerors through him that loved him, that, through, that loved us. Jesus Christ and the Father. Mm -hmm. I remember Jesus telling the uh, one of the disciples, I can't think of his name, somebody to think of, show us the Father. He said, if you see me, you done saw the Father. So they the same, you know. Some people think, well, Jesus do all right, but Jesus and the Father are the same. Ain't no difference in them. And so Jesus said, if you see me, you've seen the Father. And so we got to know that what the part, Jesus loved us so much that he died on the cross 
That was God the Father sending his son to die. Yeah. For our sin. Right. You know, and uh, I've said this before, but that movie that that guy made about the crucifixion, y'all remember that? Bell yeah. Gibson. Bell Gibson. That's it. They talk about how, how uh, bloody he was and how bad he looked. And somebody said he shouldn't have had him beat like that. Well, that's what Jesus took for us. Those were our sin that he that he buried. That was our being that he buried. So we ought to know, we as children of God ought to know that we mess up and we, we ain't all that, but we ought to know that because Jesus died and took our death, I'm going to hold on to his unchanging hand until he said, well done, a good and faithful servant. I might fall, I might mess up, but thank me to God. Yeah. We can ask for forgiveness and he will give it to us. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. How you going to be a conqueror? Through him that loved us. Yeah. Well, you know, I think when you say that, you know, that the, the, even the scripture says it's going to be a great fall away. How is it that God is so good and people claim that how is it so great of falling away if God is so good? How is it falling away? Yeah, people not come to church, people not want to. Well, these people rather have a good time, or what they call a good time. They think they're having a good time. They rather drink, smoke dope, and all that kind of stuff, run after men and women. They rather do that. I've heard a lot of them say, well, I ain't, they don't go to church because I'm having me some fun. They ain't having no fun. They think they are. But in the final analysis, well, they fun. when the hammer come down on their head, they gonna really, they gonna like that the Bible says that some of them ran to the rocks and told them to fall on me. Some of them ran to the mountain and told them to fall on me. Because they see Jesus when he come back. When he come back. We don't want to be in that situation. I say, come, Lord, come. You know? Can I add, can I add one thing, too? Go ahead. For the McCauley's, the, the, the scripture denotes for us is a reminder or it is a prophecy saying to us that he's not coming. The church is not going to end. The church age is not going to end until there become a great falling away. Oh yeah. I think that's a sign for the that's church a, yeah, it sure is. that we are entering into the it, ultimate That's life. a sign that we as children of God ought to make sure that we got Jesus for our Savior. Got Jesus for our God. Get on his side and fight with him against this Satan. And you know, I think about how can anybody not love God when all that he has done with them? And we look at Satan who wants to be God and we say, what kind of fool is this guy want to take God's place? But he ain't no God. He's a, he wants to be instead. He, he wants to take God's place. He did that when God, he earned the right to be a sheriff, garden of uh, the mercy seat. That a garden of mercy seat, he wanted to be the head. He wanted to sit on it. Yeah, he wanted to sit on it. He wanted to be in God's place. And that's what he going to do. And anybody that ain't read their Bible, when he come back, he going to fool a lot of people. The Bible said the whole world went after him. The world is those that don't believe. Those that haven't read the Bible know that he coming at the sixth trump. Yeah. Well, you know, I know, I think I heard <coughs> Jim Jones' story. If you can follow Jim Jones, you know people's minds have got to be messed up. If you can follow a guy like that and believe it, he's going to tell you to drink it, and y'all got to excuse me, what y'all doing? Where y'all mind at? What's going on? Well, you know what? It's more than one Jim Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said there's going to be a lot of them coming yeah. in his name, talking about he the Christ. But he said, don't believe him. Let me tell you something. When Jesus comes back, 
and we're going to all be out of the flesh. We're going to turn into a spirit. When, that's how you know when Jesus comes back. When he comes back, we're going to all be spiritual beings. Mm -hmm. So when they're talking about, uh, since we know that uh, Satan is the, he's the prince of this world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are they talking about, when they say like, nothing can separate us from principalities, are they talking about Satan in there, right there when he's got principalities mm -hmm. and powers? No, I don't think they're talking about no principalities and powers, don't they? Well, see, there's all kind of power in this world, you know. But the principalities they talking about, they're not talking about uh, Satan, I don't know. Is that what you're asking? Is that yeah. Satan? No, no, I'm talking about, talking about him, his powers. No. Okay. It's the activities of the world that try to get us to, to move away from the love of God. To make it's, us doubt that God loves yeah. us. Those things are listed there. Yeah. The balances are, are, are all powers in high places. Mm -hmm. So if, if you had to give a definition for definition for principalities, what would it be? I think it's in high places. You got a lot of people in high places. Yeah. What is it, Pastor? What you say? I can't remember. We're talking about princes and things like that in high places, yeah. yeah. Yeah, people, well, that's what it, uh, the Bible said. We're not fighting against it's flesh and blood, but so we're fighting against principalities. Well, people in high places. Well, they be strong influences. That's yeah, true. that's what it Satan is. Influence. Yeah. But see, Satan, when he comes back, he's going to call lightning from the sky. He's going to do some things. When you say principality that comes steal, uh, steal, steal, and destroy, that's him, you know, trying to get people off the game, get people from being saved and yeah. Jesus Christ, really. Let me tell you. Yeah, power. Huh? It's, it's rulers. It's rulers. Well, yeah. In authority. In high places. Yeah. Yeah. The same will be one of them. Yeah. Well, he's behind the other. Yeah. He got, you know, it was a lot of angels that left God and went with Satan. We didn't ever, I don't know, it said a third of them, so ain't no telling how many millions that was, but it's a lot of people that are under sin, a lot of angels that are under sin. A third yeah. of heaven, a third of heaven was cast down. Yeah. The second was cast down. A third of heaven, angelic angels was cast down. Yeah. Of Satan. And see, they already got their place. They know they going to a burning hell. But look, he said, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life. Death can't uh, separate us from the love of God. Life can't separate us. No angels. I told y'all about those angels. Them, them got to be Satan's angels because the holy angels that uh, answer to God, you know. And principalities, yeah. You got people in high places. These are principalities. That's what I, I talked about. I said something about it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's all kind of crooks in these places. Yeah. And they are of Satan. It's <laughs> crooks in the White House. Crooks in the Congress. Mm -hmm. You know, if anybody up there they ain't no crook, they don't overran them, you know. I remember when they were running around there talking about hang pinch. Look like somebody would have got out of that stuff right then. Mm -hmm. They're going to hang the vice president. The Trump, yeah. The and this guy, and so. If you're dealing with the, if the, the, the dark world, is not afraid oh, no. to continue to convey or to move their, their thing against us. Yeah. And you know, and they think they can. They can cure everything with a gun. That's why you see so many shootings now. They think, well, they mess with me. I'm going to pull my gun out on them, you know. I got a gun, but I ain't going to pull it out. Can you, can, you, can you be a child of God and deny the word of God? No. I mean, let's say, I let's, say, let's, say let's say if you're a politician and, and you pass the laws and, and you know that's against God. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But well, see, that's called in name only. They just saying that to try to get some votes. I'm a Christian. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, they just trying to get votes. So they, they can believe in But if they it. don't do what the words say, they don't believe. Actually, actually, I think 
politicians, they go about this thing to separate church and state. So their, their politics is not dealing with church or religion. But no. if you're in your heart, if you're a Christian, yeah. I mean, you can't separate that from the Word of God. I don't care who you are. You're right, but they have to, they have to politic in a way that they don't well, want to be extreme religious. So yeah. They say politic and deny God all at the same time? That's the choice they make in the politics. Right. 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 That's not denying God, right? They're not, they're not denying it. Oh. They, they word their, listen to how they word their, mm -hmm. their word. They, they come around, go around everything. Right. They never right. give you a straight answer. But if, if, you, if, you, if you pass a law that, 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 that men can marry men, women can marry women, that's just straightforward. There ain't, ain't no cut dry to that. It, it, we know in the Bible, and I know everybody else knows that it, it's not, it's just wrong. You're right. He should have, you're talking about Obama, he should have stayed, if he, if he claimed to be a Christian, he should have stayed with, with what the Bible says. Yes. Instead of instead of compromising, okay, what come his way? He should yeah. have, but he compromises the position because he dealt with rights. Make right. Make it sound right. No, he dealt with rights. Right. Right. Human rights. Yeah, that's what he dealt with rights. Right. And see, they come from yeah. well, uh, somewhere in the Bible I can't remember where they they taking man's law and yeah. placing God's law. With man, with man, so God ain't gonna stand for that, and we know it. Well, but see, in the, in the end, we got to revert, revert back to the scripture of the tariffs growing up with the wheat. There's gonna be a separation, yeah, yeah. You know, and like I say, these forms of principality and not necessarily denying Christ, but you're not standing up for Christ. That's right. You're gonna have to give an account for it, you know. We can't be the judge ever, but no. on that on that day, they will give an account for it. But well, if, if you make the see if you make a decision to go against God's word, you are denying Christ. <laughs> yeah, anytime you don't stay with the word, you know the word. Like these folks that got these quiz coming, like they are preaching. You make it a claim. You make it a claim or assumption. That they know the word, you know, they might not know the word. They can claim. Well, that's true to too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we got a lot of we got a lot of members yeah. that are members of what he don't know the word. The word. Yeah. But yeah. like what yeah. Donnie yeah. said a yeah. while ago, Jesus and the Father are gonna separate in the end. He didn't leave it up to man to do that because man might have some favor. You go down to the judge and you give him a little money, you can get off. But that's, you that's gonna be after now. Yeah, but but that's the separation. But we supposed to have discernment to know. It's going to be after the after the church age. Oh yeah, after the church age. Well, you and I are not going to be a part of the separation. No, no, no. no. Up if you, yeah. we got that understanding from the lesson, all right? Yeah, but there's going to be a separation from the from the sheep and the goat. So we're yeah. not a part of that. We, we caught up. So no, those who are left behind is going to be the ones we caught up. Let, let me make a point yeah. about Peter. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Peter denied Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still preaching. Mm -hmm. yeah. So think when you start saying this person is doing this because they is they a Christian or not because they're going against the Bible. Yeah. Peter did the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that I'm saying so we so people will be a Christian and do stuff against God. Yeah. Yeah. So would you consider Peter being a Christian? And he's and he, and he was a Jew. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know what you're saying. He was a believer. He was a believer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just showing the point that you can be believer of Christ and still do stuff wrong. Right. Well, you know, Peter, he tried to stand up for Christ. And Christ told him before the Cock crow, you're going to deny me three times. Mm -hmm. Peter may not have believed it when he told him, but when that third time came, yeah. and when yeah. that cock crow, yeah. that yeah. rooster just doing his job. Yeah. 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 He done denied three times. Yeah, bear in mind also that Peter didn't believe he was raised from the dead either. 
He wasn't old in the Well, he wasn't old. A lot of them didn't believe until they saw him. Well, he wasn't believing. When he come walking that way, well, see, huh? when he told them about that, it was like a fairy tale to them. That's what, you know, he told them he was going to be crucified and rise again. But they didn't. It's it like a fairy tale. So, so the question is, you can, you can, you can believe in Jesus Christ and deny, deny his word at the same time. Well, if you got the Holy Spirit in you, your actions, sometimes your actions. Okay, you're seeing. You're seeing. Yes. Okay, okay, I can deal with that. Yeah. But now the scripture here saying nothing can separate you. That's right. right. Not seeing you. Nothing can separate you. That's what he said. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. That sounds. That sounds right. Yeah. Let me thirty-six here. Say something wrong and tell a lie, but then they won't own up to it. Yeah, I lied. They say I didn't say that. Yeah. So they lying again. Look at this verse. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. You know what? That right there, Peter Trump or Paul talking about. We are killed. Don't nobody tell them about us. They'll kill us in a heartbeat. That's what he's saying. Yeah, the world will. Yeah. For thy sake. We do it for Jesus' sake. You know, let it, you know, we ain't got to that bad yet, but back in the long time ago, they were killing people if they said they were believing in Christ. That's right, Christians too. Huh? Christians too. They was killed. Yeah, they was killing Beating them to the line. Having a... Uh, have another. Yeah. What she said, fear that. So I guess I guess it just boils down to yeah, you the in this, Jesus Christ. This see, that's the challenges that we're being believers. We face all kind of challenges. Yes, yes right. Yeah. You see, and that's what he said. He, Paul said, "We kill all the all the day long." But you know what? Paul wasn't afraid of death. Yeah. And so, so he the one. What did he write? He wrote something about death and then I, can, I had it wrote down and I don't know if it, let me so see. Actually, it. actually, I guess when we, we do things against God, it's like God said he chastised those who he loves. Yeah. So yeah. maybe if you, if you do wrong, you just might have to take a whooping, but that don't mean you're not saved. Yeah. Well, that's right. Well, and God, that he said those he loves, he chastised. Yeah. If he didn't love you, he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't try to get you right. Just having it was to bring you to a holiness. Yeah, bring you yeah. out of that mess you mean, yeah. or whatever you're doing. And you know, it had a purpose. And right. God just has it. It has a, you know, God, a yeah, it got a purpose. Like yeah. mom and dad used to have back in the day, they had a purpose. Yeah, it did. Hey, and it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them did. <laughs> well, yeah, it worked around them anyway. Right. Yeah, well, that's true. But you feel pressure to whoop. But see, it, it, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing when God says, if you don't chastise your children, you don't love them. That's you right. I mean, did that sound harsh? It sounds harsh, but. Really it's true, because when they get out here in this world, they don't know how to respect people. I mean, they, it's just chaos. And, and if you don't raise them with respect, they get out there in the world, they're just disrespectful to the police. Well, the police got it bad. They talk to the police like dogs today. They don't get shot by the police. But listen, but listen, you know, white folks used to talk to the police real bad. They got black folks talking to the police real bad now, too. Well, you know what? The police stopped me two or three times. And I always say, yes, sir. And boy, you know, I never did that. Some way he stopped me because he told me. And uh, I didn't never had no problem with the police. Me neither. But I just stopped this. But you give him respect because he wearing that badge. Yeah. But a lot of these young folks won't do that. No, 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 no. Huh? You can elaborate on this verse right here. It said, as it is written, for thou I say we are killed all the day long. Yeah. We are, we are killed 
all the day long we'll kill. So, you know, what Paul was talking about here, I believe, is that people were being killed when he wrote this. People were being killed all the day long. I said a while ago, I think about... The um, oh yeah, they, that's what they would do. You know, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. You know, they throw him in that lion's den so that lion could eat him up. That's what that lion did the fuck. And the Hebrew boys were thrown in the fire with friends. So they could be burned up. And some of these countries now, if you preach in the word of God, hey baby, you in trouble. Yeah. Oh yeah. This what it said. Look what it said. Look what the words in there. He said, for thus, for thy sake. He said, for thy sake. Who's keep, keep, is someone being killed for you? Yeah. You see, we are killed all the day long. Why? Said, because because that said, we are they didn't deny. Yeah. They, they, didn't, they didn't deny. When they came, uh, Daniel prayed, and they went and told on him. Them boy, and they got the king set up a statue, told him to bow down. And I like them boy, what they said. They said, King, we ain't gonna bow down to your statue. Well, maybe you didn't hear me. I'll give you one more chance. You ain't gotta give us no chance. We ain't gonna bow down to no statue. We serve one God. That's it. And we not gonna bow down to no, what they call them, thing? Idol. We're not going to buy down with no idol. And that's the way we all feel. That's why they were killed all the day long. You know, when this was written, that's what was happening. You had a lot of them that was martyred. I mentioned Stephen a while ago. That he was martyred. All he did was told the truth. But they stoned him to death. And he told them, I see the heavens open up. I see God. But he said, for that sake. And uh, we don't see it much now, but it's in other countries, like I think Brother McCauley said, they do this kind of stuff. They'll pick up a stone and kill you. Sometimes they'll kill you for not, not even uh, knowing Christ, not even saying nothing about him. But he said, for that sake, we are killed all the day long. So what does that mean? Paul said, uh, well, I wish I broke that down, but when you kill, when you die, what, what, what's what going to happen you? to you if you're a child of God? Listen, but, but yeah. you, know, you go back to your original thought. See, he's writing, he's writing to the Christians in Rome. Yeah. In, in Rome. That's in right. Ephesus. And so that's just what he's saying to them. We are, he said, for that sake, we are killed. Oh, the day long. Yeah. So the, there goes the people who sacrifice in their life for followers of Christ. That's right. And you don't see that happening in our modern day society. No, that don't happen now. Like there was a time. Yeah. I mean, but in other countries, it, it is happening. It's, yeah, well, yeah. Well, they it's killed them. It's happening like it did back then. They killed them for stealing, cutting off their hands if they steal. And stuff like that. I think they still do that. Still yeah, they, they still do that. They were talking about this guy a few years ago. He's from America, but he's over in another country. And he's, he did something. They came. They beat him with a cane. You know, saying got to be busy. They cut your head off. And you ain't got something not to steal. Man, I ain't going to be scared if they cut your head off. Hey, no, no. What do you think they do to a rapist? Huh? They don't play over there in some of them countries. And what do we got over here? Oh, God told us that should not kill, but people kill it every day. If they would retaliate on these folks and kill them, that their killing would soon be cut down. If they would put them in that chair, but no, we got some people that no, don't kill them. Let them they give rehabilitate, right? rehabilitate them. A rehabilitator. They don't never get rehabilitated. They just keep on killing. Yeah. But God had to answer when he said, Thou shall not kill. If you kill, you gonna be killed. That's in the word, that's in the Ten Commandments. Yeah. But 
These people don't don't roll it out. Don't don't, don't want to do it. Yeah. They don't want to do what God says. But what God give us in this written word that we have, this Bible right here, if we abide by it, things would be better. Things would change. We wouldn't have all these crooks and killings that's going on. So you think you can be a Christian and still be pro-choice? Pro-choice, that means to do what God say, still do what God say. What does it mean that huh? if you want an abortion, you can have one? Oh, God don't say nothing about no abortion. That's great murder. Yeah, that ain't nothing but murder. God, what did he tell Jeremiah? When you, I knew you when you were in your mother's womb. Yeah. God already know. They, they kill it. They, you know about that abortion? Yeah, they, people that's for that abortion, they already been born. You see? They already been born. So I ain't never been for that, for people to kill a baby. It's unborn. Because yeah. I know that's against God, because I hate it myself. Now they talk about they got some, if a person get raped and have a baby, they ought to be to do that. Well, I don't know. God is the one, even though they think of sexual act to have a kid, God is the one that know these kids. Yeah, because even in that, it's still murder. It's murder. That's what it is. That's it. They call abortion all they want to. They done murdered some kids that are helpless. Fetus, they didn't have a chance. They murdered them. That person, that kid could have grown and been, been something good. Could have been a warrior for God. Could have been a good person. You know, think about it. There's a lot of people that have had abortion. And I ain't got nothing to do with who had the abortion because I ain't never had one. I <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, it hurts me that people would do that and think nothing of it. Think nothing of it. I hope they have asked God to forgive me. Yeah, we have to be on the compassionate end of it as well as sharing the good news of Christ. If we if we have someone that we know have had have yeah, well. abortion, you know, because they say, I, like you and I, I have not, but they say that that impact still impacts them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they still they still yeah. go through that. So, so we have to be on that end where we can comfort them. Well, I would have compassion on them, but you know, I still don't like it because, like Brother McCall said, they not for murder. God still murder a defenseless fetus, a, a child that not even born. That's murder. Yeah. Oh yeah, he'll forgive him. Yeah. Okay. Yes. What about uh, men raping a, a girl that's got it cured? And then get what do you think about that? What do I think about that? Mm -hmm. well, man <laughs> raping a girl and they get pregnant. Uh, a, girl, a 10 year old girl that starts her period. Oh, oh, so she oh, her period, oh, she oh. She can't get pregnant. But a 10 year old body, a child body is not equipped to carry a baby. What do I think about that? They should have gave that girl an automatic gun and thought blow his brain. You're saying that. Watch out, you know, I'm just you know, kidding. Watch out. I'm just kidding. No, she was, she was, was, she was 10 years old. She and pregnant. she got pregnant. She, she, she was raped. I know. She didn't get pregnant on her own. No, she, she was, was raped. raped. But they made the decision to take the abort the baby. Uh huh. Did they abort? And, and, and I think it was Mexico. And, and it was the, it was a girl's daddy or uncle, and and there was a white uh, female doctor. It was it was on TV yeah. that the woman that did, it, but she had to go to another state. But they oh, made yeah. a decision to, to abort the baby oh, okay. because of her age and her body yeah, character. Okay. Yeah. 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 Person that can't well, well, she, well, she was raped. She wasn't really raped. Rape is not really. I, I know that. I'm not. I'm I, not I, I, I know what I'm saying. Still come out to the bottom being murdered. Okay, I cut it. I look at it. That's what I have to look at it, though. Yeah. They look at it from a medical perspective. Right. But why? Why the grown man gonna go around doing that to feminism? I know what you're doing. Well, you know what? You better 
You know that rape, and you're supposed to get the same thing you do for killing folks, but they done slacked all the up. When you kill somebody, you're supposed to be killed. When you rape somebody, you're supposed to be killed. Back in the day, they were stoning somebody if they raped somebody. Yeah, but they ain't no, they ain't no, they ain't keeping God's law in this world. This world was built up on God's law. They want a place that they could have freedom of religion. But they got over here and they started changing, changing things. Listen, listen guys, listen. Listen, we, we know murder is, is against God's law. But there are occasions, there are occasions where a woman carry, carrying a baby, they have to make a decision. Do the baby live or the mother live? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so many different scenarios come in there. But we know what God's law say, but you're not, you're not sovereign God. God is sovereign. And if, if, you, if you look at it that way, yeah, I heard you preach it, that's nothing too hard for God. So, even if you say, well, hey, both of them might just live, you know, it's nothing to our God. But they, see, they're they not listening to my message. Right. They, I mean, they, they, they might not be, they might not be in church. They have to make a better one. They I, I, I understand. I really do. That's what I'm saying. I really understand. Yeah. 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 And they, and they got to be taken out. If they don't, the mama and the baby will die. And there have been cases where the mama, the mama did die. But the baby was sick or the, whatever was going on. And they both died. But you know, when you, when you listen to stuff like that, you can hear a, a lot of stories where, where the doctor said you got six months, but here it is, 10 years, you're still living. So, you know, God, God knows. Well, that's because they don't know nothing about life. God is the one that controls life. God. They're not dealing with faith. No, they deal with what they think. Yeah, they're not dealing with faith and religion. They ain't no God. They should tell people that. that I, I, well, I'm not a doctor, and I don't believe it. I work with doctors, I don't believe everything they say in the When they go to medical school, they're not dealing with faith and religion. I understand, I understand. They're dealing with the human body. I understand. You know, so. so it, it's, it's, I guess it's not the fact, whatever medical facts. That's what they get. That's what they go to school for. They ain't went to theology school, seminary school, or they are to the Bible. They deal with the human body. And they say, when they tell you, when your when your body starts breaking down, they say, well, you got they just make an estimate how long do you gonna live. And God's will right. say, God's will steps in and, and breaks the mercy. Allows you to live much longer. That's right. So my doctor tell me something. I asked him, but he knows that I know. But I not what he knows, but he, I know enough to ask him. But explain it, to, and he does. Yeah. He's been my doctor since back in the uh, uh, in nineties. He never said to you what the Bible said. No, no, he no, he didn't say that. Right. He said he, when you sit there with him, he diagnosed. He said. What, what the Lord tell you this morning? No, he never did that. Uh, he, he's, dealing with, he's dealing with your body. Mm -hmm. That's why I ask questions. And I don't, I don't believe that thing to kill me. Well, that, you know what they say, go to the microphone. <laughs> you, know, you know what you make it is, you agree? Uh, <laughs> we took that lesson. There's <laughs> <laughs> a little bit after seven. I'm going to be in this. Right. <laughs> Sheila, can you put that verse up? Which verse? Psalm 46. No, it's another one. We're going to close out. I want everybody to stand and repeat and say this verse as we leave. I want it on the screen so we all can have it. Huh? You know that one Do you? Yeah. We're going to see it. Let us stand and say this, then we're going to be this message. I know that's right. As we have studied about the more than conqueror, we got to know this is how we are more than conqueror. Let us repeat this together. God is our refuge and strength from the very present help in his soul. Amen. And now, therefore, Will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river that 